Welcome to Cascader. This tutorial is designed to help you become familiar with the software by guiding you step by step to create several sample animations. You don't need any prior knowledge of the animation process and each piece will take no longer than 5 minutes to complete. As you start the program, you will be greeted by the pop-up window. In the Learn menu, under the Samples tab, you can find scenes with characters in them. Any of the first three scenes will work for this tutorial. The viewport is the large window where you can view the scene objects. To control the viewport camera, hold down the Alt button. Hold Alt and the left mouse button to rotate the camera. Hold Alt and the right mouse button to zoom the camera in and out. Hold Alt and the mouse wheel to pan the camera. In order to create an animation, we need to change the character's poses on different frames. For this, Cascader includes a dedicated intelligent auto posing tool. To turn it on, click this button. Green controller dots will appear. How do they work? Click the point to select it. Then select the translate tool. Select and move the large green dots. You can select specific axis or click in the center of the circle of the manipulator and move objects in the plane of the screen. When you are using auto posing, the most convenient approach would be to set the bigger points first. Big green points are the main controllers. As you move them, smaller points are adjusted automatically. For example, the character's shoulders and the entire body would turn after the hand. The character also includes direction controller. If you move the direction controller point, the controller will become active. If a controller is colored blue, this means that it is active. The tool will take into account that the character should look in the direction set by the controller. In such a case, the character would not turn after the hand. If you need to edit the positions of the elbows or knees, this can be done by rotating hands and feet. Double click the big controller near the wrist to select all three points. Then select the Rotate tool and use it to rotate the hand. As the elbow's position depends on the hand's position, it will rotate subsequently. A knee is influenced by the foot's position in the same way. Other points can be activated when you need them. And if we move one of the smaller points, it too will become an active controller. It won't be adjusted to the positions of the bigger green controllers, and it itself will influence other small points. To deactivate a controller, select it and press Shift plus Z. When you deactivate a point, it will assume a position defined by the points that remain active. For our first animation, we'll set several relatively simple poses. To do this, we will go back to the character's original pose, the so-called T pose. Any unwanted changes can be cancelled by using Ctrl plus Z hotkey. For the first pose, simply move the character's hands down. Select the big green controller on the hand. Make sure that the translate manipulator is selected. Place the mouse cursor over the manipulator circle and move it while holding the left mouse button. Rotate the camera across the model to see how the pose looks from different angles. Under the viewport window, there is the timeline. It shows animation frames. The poses the animator sets are stored in the keyframes, or keys. These keys are colored dark blue on the timeline. In our case, we have a key in the zero frame. Switch to frame 10 and create a new key there by clicking the key icon. Create keys on frames 20 and 30 as well. On a newly created key, the character will remain in the same pose as on the key before it. So the poses in all the keys turned out to be the same. Usually, the pose is changed before creating the next key. But in this case, it was more convenient to create all three keys with the same poses first, which we will now slightly edit. Go to frame 10 and move the character's right leg up. Switch to frame 20 and move up the left leg. Play the animation. At the moment, our character moves from pose to pose rather abruptly, without in-between poses. We can automatically let Cascader add such poses to the frames between the keys. Move the cursor to the zero frame. Hold the left mouse button down and move the cursor through the timeline, stretching the black border. With this border, select every key we have created. 
unfold the interpolation modes selector and enable Bezier clamp. In between poses will appear between the keys. Click the flag icon to limit the timeline to the last keyframe. So now we have an animation. But the motions itself still look strange and unconvincing. Let's see what the Auto Physics tool has to offer. Click the Auto Physics button. Beside the character, a physical copy will appear. This copy shows how the animation would have looked if physics tools were applied to it. In our case, we jump from one leg to another. The Auto Physics tool can make some alternations to the character's poses, or it can move the character as a whole. However, it always takes into account the poses set by the animator. If we change the pose on any frame, the tool will recalculate the result. For example, we can add arm and head motions to our animation. Go to frame 10. Select the dots on the arms and move them up a bit. We can also move the character's nose a little to tilt the head. On frame 20, we can move the character's arm a bit further up and move the head up as well. Play the animation. Now we can apply physical adjustments to the animation. Click the Snap to Auto Physics button. Now the character moves exactly as the physical model did. Also, the frames between the keys are now colored green. We'll figure out what that means soon. But first, play the animation. To disable auto posing controllers, switch to the view mode. You can save your animation by using the file menu. So we just created our first animation. Next, we'll change this animation to get a new motion. Green frames are fixed. Frames like this save current poses and they are not updated when we change keyframes. It is as if we have turned every frame on the timeline into a keyframe. This is called baking the animation. But with fixed frames, we do not lose the information of where the keys were situated, and we can easily redefine the interpolation. This is necessary if we want to make further adjustments to the animation. Select every frame on the timeline with the black border and once again set the Bezier clamped interpolation. Go back to the auto posing mode. The more frames are between two keys, the more time the motion will take. Go to frame 10 and press the plus key to add a new frame between keyframes. Add 5 new frames this way. The interval taken into account by the physics simulation is marked with a colored line above the timeline. Because now we have more frames, we need to recalculate the simulation for the new interval. Time plays a very big role for physics. The longer the jump is, the higher it will be. Add three new frames for both the takeoff and the landing sequences. Now the physical model shows that the character squats down in preparation for the jump. Now let us transform this movement into a completely different jump. Go to the last keyframe. Hold the left mouse button and drag the border in the viewport. Use this border to select every controller of the character. Use the blue arrow of the manipulator and drag the character forward. The physical model shows that now the character jumps forward. But our current poses are not very fitting for such a jump, so we'll edit them a little. Apply the physics to the animation and right away recalculate the interpolation one more time. On keyframes, the character will remain where it have been moved after snapping, because changes made to keyframes are always preserved. If we need to snap the character to the physical model only on keyframes, we don't have to manually rebuild the interpolation every time. Instead, we simply disable the fix an interpolation on change button. Then the frames between the keys won't be fixed. But once the animation is complete and we'll have to snap it to the physics one last time, it is better to enable this button and fix the frames between the keys. Now let's go back to editing character poses. Go to the keyframe in the middle of the jump. Frame 28 in our case. Move the character's legs up. Bend the character's spine a bit. For this, we recommend turning every blue point green again by using the Shift plus Z command. And maybe make some adjustments to the hands. Now, this looks more like the pose in the middle of the jump hood. 
We can also adjust the lift of pose. For example, let's make the character raise its hands. While doing this, it's important to make sure the green platform under the foot won't disappear. This platform is a fulcrum point used by the Auto Physics tool. When there are no fulcrum points, the character is considered to be in mid air. Select every controller in the character except for the supporting leg. Hold Ctrl and move the character up a bit, so the heel would move slightly up from the ground. The Ctrl key decreases the influence of the manipulators to make our adjustments more precise. When the character was jumping from one leg to another, it looked like a looped animation, because the first and the last frames were the same. Currently, the animation stops right after the character's feet touch the ground. We would like the character to land properly and to stand up after landing. For this, we will need additional frames. To increase the total number of frames, enter the number you need in the field near the timeline. You can also double-click the right edge of the slider and adjust it. In that case, the available part of the timeline will be automatically limited by the last frame. There are 12 frames between frame 0 and the first key of the jump. Let's make the landing just as long. Move 12 frames ahead from the last key and create a new key. Then set interpolation between these keys. Recalculate the physics. Now let's improve the landing pose in the key second to the last. It doesn't look too good when the character touches the ground with the hands down. This looks more like a forward jump, but we can also improve the segment where the character takes off the ground before the jump. Currently, the character instantly moves one of the legs from the ground. But we would like to have a longer preparation for the jump. Go to frame 6, add a new key. Go to frame 0, select the character's foot and press Ctrl plus C. Do not deselect the foot. Then go to frame 6 and press Ctrl plus V. This way you'll copy the position of the foot. You can also copy the second foot so it would stand firmly on the ground. On the key we have created, we can also adjust the pose a bit more and move the character's arms a bit behind the back. This will be a swing before jumping. Select every active controller and tilt the character using the rotate manipulator. But in the following interval, the arms do not move naturally. This is because by default, on in-between frames, the points in the arm are simply moved to their next position by the shortest path. This behavior is known as inverse kinematics, or IK for short. It can be useful sometimes, but in our case, we need the arm to act as a single entity, and the points in the wrist trajectories should make an arc. At the left part of the timeline, there is the animation track menu. Tracks are separate channels for different objects in the scene. Open the list of tracks and find the track with arms. On this track, select the interval before the jump and set FK interpolation for it. FK stands for forward kinematics. Now the arms do not bend, while the hands follow the arcing trajectories. And if this is not enough to get the trajectory we need, we can add a new adjusting key on this interval and set a required pose in it. New keys are used for adding corrections to the main motion. They can help to improve the animation, but when there are too many keys, the animation becomes difficult to manage. Because of this, we recommend to set the few main poses first and only add new keys when you need them. In general, the better the poses are in the main keys, the fewer additional keys you will need. So now we have created a forward jump animation. We can continue to improve it, adding new poses and refining existing ones. But for now, let's call it a day. Save your animation by using the file menu. Now let's go even further and turn this jump into a somersault. Set the interpolation to be zero clamped. Several additional keys that we had added when animating the forward jump can be removed by selecting them and once again clicking the key icon. Go to the keyframe at the middle of the jump 
and change the character's pose by making it more compact. Then select the entire character and rotate it upside down. As we can see, the character rotates on the physical ghost as well. But at the moment, the character's body becomes significantly distorted during the jump. This happens because every point in the character currently uses IK interpolation, meaning they simply move from one position to another by the shortest road. And what we need is for all the points to act like a single entity. Select every frame of the jump and switch the interpolation to FK. Now the character rotates as a whole. But what stands out now is that the character on the physical ghost no longer turns upside down. Let's see what is happening there. In the key 28 the character is turned upside down. It moves from frame 13 to 28 rotating gradually. But then the character moves from the frame 28 to 41 rotating in the opposite direction without turning over the head. For a case like this, the Auto Physics tool assumes that there was no overturn planned. It alters the pose on frame 28 and we get a normal jump. In this case, we'll need to create some additional keyframes and in them rotate the character to the direction we need. Click frame 28 to select it. Hold Shift and the mouse wheel. A yellow border will appear around the key. Drag the key 5 frames backward to frame 23. This way you'll copy that key. Use the same method to copy frame 28 5 frames forward. Now we have 3 identical keyframes for creating the rotation. We'll need to properly rotate our character in each one of them. The Ghost tool can help us with this. Open the Ghost tab and select the third mode. You should see silhouettes marking the character's position on the neighboring frames. Click the key icon to only see silhouettes for the keyframes. Taking into account the character's poses on the neighboring keyframes, we can easily adjust the rotation and position. Character poses play a big role for rotating in mid-air. Rotation will be smoother and faster if the pose of the character is compact and symmetrical. And if the pose is not symmetrical, the character might turn sideways. That's why we need to be accurate with mid-air poses. This animation could also use some refinement of the poses before the jump, because preparing for a somersault is not the same thing as preparing for a regular jump. Before a normal jump, the character should move the arms behind and then make a big swing forward, helping the body to build up momentum. For a somersault, on the other hand, the character should somehow spin the body forward, so the arms should move downward from the top. For this, the character will have to raise the arms first and put them a little behind the head. To understand what poses are typical for various kinds of motions, it is very important to study references. For example, you can use videos and photos of people doing tricks similar to yours. Your animation doesn't have to be identical to the references, but references help you to get the general idea of the motion you're animating. And so the somersault animation is almost done. Now let's snap our animation to the physics ghost and save the result we've got. In the end, we've got a whole of three different animations and spent not more than five minutes making each one of them. Of course, the more time you put into an animation, the better will be the end result, so any of our animations can be further refined and improved. We'd also like to mention that this tutorial only touches upon a small fraction of the tools available in the program. For example, Cascader includes different types of controllers for those who would prefer full manual control over the character's pose. Also, the main tools we had used, Auto Posing and Auto Physics, are currently in development, and their functionality is still limited. And if you would like to continue to learn about Cascader and animation in general, be sure to watch other tutorials on our YouTube channel and on the Cascader website.